what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Octavio S version 4.6 official build based on Android 13. It has a lot of features that I will show you in today's video. So do stay tuned till the end. I have of course flashed it with the Orange Fox recovery and I have also flashed the DFE because my storage is decrypted. If you don't know what I'm talking about you can watch the flashing guide from the description. In the Android version section this is how it looks like. We get the Octavius logo up top and if you keep tapping on it you will get website which is this Octavius official website and you can download the ROMs from here I guess. Let me show you the other things like the Octavio's version. This is the 4.6 official build here it shows and the Octavio maintainer here is Prakash Vardwaj I think is the full name of him. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM and the Android version shows as Android 13. The security patch here is latest of July 5th 2023 that you are getting here and the stock kernel is the 4.14 English OS kernel and the AC Linux data shows as enforcing but here the build date shows as 10th July but yeah that's fine. In the system settings this is how it looks like it doesn't have a system updater though we have this usb configuration in here you can set it to file transfer for convenience we have the gestures right here in here we have the quickly open camera the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we do have the full screen gesture swipe to access google app or invoke assistant as you can see and we have the left edge right edge customization but there is no thickness or pill bar length customization three button navigations are there and in the settings there is the invert layout option let me go to the one handed mode and it has this show notification and the full screen to reach and here both options are working we have this double tap to actually check phone and then there is the press and hold power button by the way if i'm going back just notice there is the newer kind of back animation so it definitely looks cool let me go back we have the swipe to screenshot that actually works fine there is the share edit delete and the google lens feature and we have the prevent tracking option and in here we have the pop-up camera settings then we have the camera LED, front camera raise dialog, pop-up camera sound effects and we also have the camera calibration right here. So that's all about the system settings. Let's talk about the first impressions. Well, this actually feels like a lot stable but I have noticed one thing that is the like normal frame drops in the UI. I mean it is running on 60 hertz there is no overclocking option for this rom like in the evolution x rom you get 90 hertz and stuff but here those things are simply not present it is just running at 60 hertz you can see that from this test to website it will show 60 over here as you can see 60 fps and 60 hertz i got used to the 120 hertz and stuff in the poco a5 and the redmi note 10 pro also in the redmi k20 pro i got used to with the 90 hertz experience in the evolution x rom maybe because of that it's looking like that Otherwise, I would say if you are used to with the 60 Hertz, it could be fine for you. But for custom ROM users who has already used 90 Hertz on K20 Pro, it will feel sluggish in the UI everywhere. Every time you pull down quick thinning panel, every time you swipe up and just like scroll some stuff in the app drawer. So everywhere, I would say it will feel a little bit laggy, but definitely I can say it's not actually lagging. Here, as you can see, it's not actually lagging. It is working fine, but there is that 60 Hertz, which definitely feels slow. In the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot, lens, and the clear all feature. Also on the bottom, you can see the RAM usage status. And in here, you can go to the split top mode and stuff if you want. Let me show you the stock launcher. Of course, we get this Octavi home launcher by default. And in here, in the miscellaneous settings, we have the use taskbar, allow home screen rotation, hidden product apps, shyishans, you can disable. Let me go back in the recents. We have the memory info, scroll by vibration, screenshot, lens, and clear all. Then we have the app drawer here. We have the themed icons, app search bar, icon labels in drawer, and the row height, background, opacity, etc. In the home screen settings, we have the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen, double tap to sleep, and the wallpaper scrolling and zooming. And the parallax then the single page center and some google kind of features over here are there and there is a music search and stuff if you want to enable those you can let me go to the icons in here we have the icon pack notification dots etc customization talking about the widgets yes i have also added the subscriber count widget we just crossed 29,000 subscribers so huge thanks to you guys do subscribe if you have not yet so that we hit 30k real soon and let me show you the other widgets the battery widget is simply not working it shows loading for me right now and it may work sometimes it may not so that's how it is but the clock widget and stuff is actually working perfectly fine even the animations of it is working great by the way the wallpaper you're looking at is the stock wallpaper of this rom and these are the stock apps which are present by default here let me tell you that there is the pixar and stuff that's because i was restoring my google app data backup you also get a phone dialer which is oxygenous kind of dialer let me actually show you this so this is how it looks in the settings if you go into the sound and vibration there is the call recording and there is the auto call recording option so it does have the call recording feature in the stock dialer and that's just awesome and also you get this kind of gallery app 
by default and you can choose the folders and stuff from here i guess and there is the settings you can go so all these things you get by default and there is also this moto dolby atmos and you can change these presets to smart audio music movie game podcast custom etc options let's talk about the quick setting panel this is how it looks like by the way let me actually tell you one thing this brightness slider as you can see it goes really dim but here if even if i like make the brightness to the fullest i think for the redmi k20 pro it's not the full brightness i mean i don't know why i feel like that but yeah i have seen much better brightness than this one this is the full brightness right now but it is not fully bright by the way i do not even have the dc dimming and stuff turned on right now so i have no idea why it's not like making the display even more brighter like if, with the mid brightness just notice how dim the screen is and it's already flickering because i don't have the dc dimming turned on but yeah, that's how it is. That's how the situation is with the, with the brightness slider over here in this ROM. Except for that, I have added a lot of toggles, Wi-Fi, the mobile data, Bluetooth toggle, flashlight, device control, or the Google Home controls, auto red screen recorder is there. And for that, we have the HEVC and the device audio microphone, audio recording, same time, hotspot, then the DTS bar, dark theme, heads up, mute, and the sound toggle that is. And we have the QR code scanner, screencast, airplane mode, do not disturb and the alarm nearby shear camera and mic camera kind of sensor disabling and we have the battery saver compass dc dimming and the dolby atmos and there is the power menu if you click on advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here talking about the basic stuff yes it does have the drm certification showing as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p also the safety net does pass right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any problems and the Google Photos here does have the pixel like unlimited photos and videos backup right out of the box and that's just great. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you do get a Leica camera present by default here and it has a lot of features like for the lens switching, just notice there is the ultra wide angle lens which is working, there is a 1x mode and the 2x zooming option, also there is the 5x mode so you can actually customize up to 20x. And just notice how far you can zoom it in. Of course, this is digital zoom. The front camera working perfectly fine. And this is how it pops out. There is a classic and the textures option. So you can go with the classic or the textures as you like it. And here there is the portrait mode as well. In the portrait mode, if you go, there is this can't connect to camera and it closes right away. So that's how it is. It is not working. The portrait mode is not simply working, but there is a night mode and the more options. And we have a much more options like the vlog mode the vlog pro slow motion and it's downloading some of them like the sticker avatars and stuff movie effects all these things are getting downloaded in the background because i just cleared the data of this app i already had that downloaded but in the video settings let me show you there is the 4k 60fps option up to you can shoot 4k 60fps also in the documents mode you can shoot documents and stuff if you want and we have this pro mode and there also you will get the video option right here and for that you can also shoot up to 4k 60fps so that's just huge so in terms of video, this will be awesome. But for some reason, I don't know why the portrait mode is not working. And in here we have the movie frame, palm shutter and the volume shutter, pro color and the time burst mode and stuff Then the Google lens option. Also, there is the Leica vibrant and authentic. You can actually choose. And if you go into the settings of it, we have this original authentic Leica colors. You can enable it if you want, if you want even more pro options. And we have the super picture quality and we have the volume shutter and stuff. You can enable it if you want. Then there is the customize option. You can change the camera modes to more panel like this. And there is also this Google Photos as default gallery and stuff. All these the crazy newer kind of features. Let me just take a picture quickly. And I just took that. And right away if I try to open it. Okay, so with this gallery as you can see. The picture quality is decent as you can see. It focused here I guess. So let me actually show you the info. Yeah, this is a 12 megapixel photo. So no issues with that. For taking normal photos and videos, this Leica camera will be perfectly fine. Now let me jump into the settings and here inside this Octavia lab you will get the customizations of this ROM. If you want to skip this part, you definitely can from the seek bar. And in here we have the status bar and then we have the status bar icons. In here we have the auto rotate headset, Bluetooth etc kind of icons you can enable or disable. Then there is the show 4G instead of LTE and the show data disabled icon. Colored status bar icon, show Wi-Fi icon and the clock and date style you can customize. Even the battery style you can customize. There is this landscape iOS 16 and a much more option for the battery icon. I have been using it with this iOS 16 and with that this is how it looks. It looks very cool I would say. There is also the battery percentage you can choose the position of it and the battery percentage when charging option is there. Let me go back we have the quick settings in here we have the quick setting layout option and there is a column row and the other options. We have the vibrate on toggle touch data usage shows quiggle animation 
clear all button brightness slider position you can have it on show always and to the bottom we have this auto brightness icon as well then in the notifications we have this annoying notification reticker and the app colored background wake up on charge battery charge lighting and stuff and we have the edge lighting then the in call vibration options are also there octavi theming option is there there is the advanced option and there is all the themes that theme style i mean that you can choose also the color balance you can choose from right here then there is the luminance chroma factor and the tint background customization inside font style you have plethora of fonts including with the nothing dot font and the google sans lg smart gothic and stuff all these things are there and we have the one plus slate and a bunch more fonts are here we have the icon packs these are the options then the signal icon styles and these are the options also there is a wi-fi icon styles and these are the options that you will get then the icon shapes you can choose from also the dark theme customization is there you can schedule it and there is a pure black option in case you need that then we have this custom lock screen clock color i mean inside volume panel we have the volume steps and there is the show volume panel on the left side you can disable it if you want by the way the volume panel looks like this you can change the output device from right here and you can expand the volume panel just like this we have the navigation menu and in here we have the long press power button toggle torch keyboard cursor control and stuff in the gestures we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen then the double tap to wake on doors and we have the power menu in here we have the advanced reboot and stuff then also we have this secured power menu option if you are in the lock screen it won't show you the power menu and in the lock screen we have the lock screen charging info ripple effect and the fingerprint error vibration and authentication vibration and in here we have the lock screen font and these are the clock fonts that you will get over here plethora of options i have been using it with this riviera and let me go back we have this udfps icon picker as well you will get plethora of icons and i have been using it with the octave us icon the screen of fod is also there of course and we have the udfps customization the animation i mean and i have been using it with the mcladen let me go back we have the pulse then the left and right shortcut in the lock screen you can customize and in here we have the misc settings two step icon ignore window secure flags android p style animation sensor block per package also we get the unlock higher pc in games netflix spoof including with the unlimited google photo storage backup and the four stop button is there for the notifications that's all pretty much for the customizations now in here let me show you the battery settings this is how it looks like we have this battery bar like this and we have the adaptive battery battery charge warning battery percentage also the temperature of the battery shows up on the bottom but the thing is you cannot simply see any kind of battery info like the charging cycle current battery capacity design battery capacity are not showing up in this rom and in here let me show you with the aku battery app i have tested it with and with that the battery life that i have been getting is amazing it is showing about 9 hours and 50 minutes of screen on time so that's pretty much about 10 hours of screen on time could be a little bit exaggerated but yeah i have to say the battery life here is decent it can definitely give you eight plus hours of screen on time without any issues if your battery's health is good i have of course replaced the battery and with that my battery health is not showing up currently because i could not simply charge it normally because with a 33 watt charger it did not detect it actually detected four or five cycles like this if you're noticing so yeah that's how it is but yeah my battery health is at like about 95 percent plus so that's why i'm getting amazing screen on time and the fast charging and stuff is working perfectly fine here no need to worry about it in the sound and vibration settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls and the per app volume control increasing ring volume and the do not disturb settings are there then we have the smart pause and vibration and haptics also there is the dial per tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration touch sound etc you can customize or like turn it off and on for the screenshot starter sound and stuff if you don't like them and in here we have the me audio direct as well there is the youth edition including with the other presets that you are noticing from here i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality for the headphone jack bluetooth and the speakers the earpiece everything is perfectly fine and there's the choose preset option over here also there is the enable hi-fi mode if you want that there is the clear speaker option in case you need it in the display settings we have the brightness level and the adaptive brightness inside lock screen we have the privacy controls then the show qr code scanner and the google home controls you can control from lock device and we have the ambient music ticker always show time and for wake screen for notification we have the dark theme the display size and text live display is there and we have this display modes you can turn it off or put it to day or night it doesn't do much i would say and let me go back we have the colors you can set it to boosted and we have the auto red screen double tap to wake ambient display option is there and of course there is this pickup option and there is the pulse notification pickup i have just enabled that I did not find it earlier and we have this dc dipping option i haven't enabled it right now let me actually show you if the pickup is actually working so here i just pick up the device okay so as you can see the pickup gesture is actually working perfectly fine no issues 
In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. You can change the wallpapers from here and there is a 16 colors for the basic and wallpaper colors. Dark theme, themed icons are there and for the grid, you can choose up to 6 by 10. In the security, this is how it looks like. In the settings of it, we have the enhanced pin privacy, then the power button instantly lock, scramble pin layout and the quick unlock feature. Let me just quickly set up the face unlock. And there is the verify it's you in apps option disabling and we have the when swiping up on lock screen, I'll just enable that. And here, let me show you in the more settings, you will also get the app lock and in here you can lock any particular app that you are willing to. Now, let me show you, of course, there is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. And for that, the fingerprint scanner is working fine with the screen of a 40. Let me try one more time. So, yep, as you can see, the screen of a 40 is working perfectly fine without any issues. And even from the lock screen, if I try by double tapping to wake and in here from the lock screen, just notice how fast it unlocks. There is no problems whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner in this ROM. I haven't faced any issues with the fingerprint scanner. It's just marvelously fast, no issues at all. And from the lock screen, yes, the shortcuts and stuff is working perfectly fine, no issues. From the lock screen, if I show you the face unlock, if I just swipe up, as you can see, it shows recognizing face and it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I just double tap to wake and swipe up. And of course it unlocks by the way i cannot simply see a always on display toggle over here so because of that i have to go into the display settings then go into the ambient display and from here i have to turn on always on and then i'll get the always on display and with that the clock looks like this and here the animations as you can see are working perfectly and even from the always on display the fingerprint scanner is actually working perfectly fine no problems whatsoever it is very smooth and here the app lock this is how it looks like and if i tap the fingerprint scanner the app particularly unlocks and goes wherever I left it. Now, in case if you are wondering about the overall performance of the UI, yes, the performance is good. It's not bad at all. And the scrolling and stuff, it's working perfectly. While scrolling, I would say it doesn't do that kind of lagginess in the UI. As you can see, it's scrolling perfectly fine. No problems once the contents of Twitter loads up. As you can see, the scrolling is perfectly smooth and even switching between apps is not a problem here. The RAM management is really good. No issues. The Octave US, the latest build is a fine ROM. It has the ANX camera or Leica camera. The portrait mode for me is not working, but otherwise the Leica camera is perfectly fine. And if you're wondering about the benchmarks here are the N221 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall performance of the UI. So let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think about the latest Octave US build for the Redmi K20 Pro. I definitely liked it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and share this video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.